Hello and welcome to Call of Chemistry. This will be the third video regarding organic chemistry, some basic principles and techniques chapter of class 11. In this video, we will discuss basic concepts in organic reaction mechanism. So let's start. So to learn the organic reaction mechanism, firstly we have to know why does a reaction take place. If there is a reaction as follows, this is a substrate and this is the reagent and we get the product. Now why this reaction is occurring? The answer is to gain stability. Each and every system of this universe wants to lose some energy and gain stability. So greater the stability, lesser will be the energy. So from this concept, we can say that energy of substrate is greater than energy of product because the substrate energy is high that's why its upon reaction convert into product and it loses some energy to gain stability that's why we often see graph like this so this is a substrate and this is the product we can see that the energy of substrate is much higher than the energy of product. That's why upon reaction substrate loses some energy and convert it into product and gains some stability. Now what is the function of reagent? Reagent actually increases the energy of the substrate. Substrate and reagent combines to form a highly energetic species which is called the activated complex which is shown over here. This is called the activated complex which is highly energetic now a question may arise into your mind that this activated complex may return back to the substrate it may not return back to the product because it is easier to return the substrate than to the product because here is much energy is needed to reach the product so the activated complex may return back to the substrate than that of convert into product well your question is absolutely right that's the reason behind not all the reactant molecules converted into product molecule suppose there are 100 molecules of substrate is there out of these 100 molecules 70 molecules converted into product rest 30 molecules return to the substrate from the activated complex so rest 30 molecules return to the substrate and 70 molecules have 70 molecules converted into product and rest 30 molecules shown over here return to the substrate. Sometimes we see this type of graph regarding organic reaction mechanism. So this is the substrate and this is the product. These are the two activated complex. Now what does this denotes? This denotes the intermediate, which is comparatively lower in energy than that of the activated complex. This intermediate is a very important aspect of the organic reaction mechanism because it actually decides the structure, orientation and stereochemistry of the product. So intermediate is a very important aspect. Now reactions are nothing but bond breaking and bond making process and this breaking or fission of covalent bonds can take place in two ways. Those are homolytic fission and the second is heterolytic fission. 
Firstly, we discuss about homolytic fission. Suppose a compound AB. Now, the bond between AB consists of two electrons. And this homolytic fission takes place in such a way that each atom takes, play, takes away one electron of this shared pair. That is such a way. And forms A radical and B radical. Basically, homolytic fission occurs in such a way that this electron is taken away by A and this electron is taken away by B. Actually, each atom takes away one electron from the shared pair and forms two radicals. Now, here comes a very important basic concept. If one asks you that which one has greater number of electrons Cl dot or Cl. Now the answer is both Cl dot and Cl are isoelectronic species. That means both of them contains equal number of valence electrons. In order to understand this concept, we take example of HCl. Suppose this electron of H and this is the electron of Cl. And if homolytic fission occurs, then such way and we get H dot and Cl dot. Now, atomic Cl has 7 valence electrons. In HCl, if we draw the lone pairs of chlorine, this is one lone pair, this is another and this is another. Now, if we count the valence electron of chlorine, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. This is the electron of hydrogen. And if homolytic fission takes place, this hydrogen radical forms and these electrons retained by chlorine and this remains the same. So, if we count the electrons, of chlorine, then it will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So, here also it contains 7 electrons. So, Cl dot and Cl are nothing but the same species. Similarly, H and H dot are the same species because hydrogen contains 1 electron and if homolytic fission takes place, these electrons is taken away by hydrogen. So, this is equivalent to the hydrogen atom. Now, we discuss about the hydrolytic fission. Suppose a compound is A. And this is the electron of A and this is the electron of B. Hydrolytic fission occurs in such a way that one atom takes both the electrons of the shared pair. Suppose B takes the both electrons this and this and we get a plus and b negative we will understand by example of hcl suppose this is the electron of hydrogen and this is the electron of chlorine and if we draw the lone pairs of chlorine this will be yeah and if heterolytic cleavage takes place such a way then we get h plus and we get lone pairs are over here and this and if we count the total electrons of chlorine then it will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. So this, this contains 8 electrons sorry 8 valence electrons.
part atomic cell contains seven valence electrons so upon heterolytic cleavage this cl minus contains eight valence electrons one electron greater than the atomic cell so that's why we write cl minus this minus represents one extra electron than atomic cell now we discuss about the reagents the attacking reagents are classified as electrophiles and nucleophiles firstly we discuss about electrophiles electrophile means electron loving species those species that are electron deficient and do not fulfill octet are called electrophile so electrophile means electron loving species and they are electron deficient and does not fulfill octet we take some examples of electrophiles so we take firstly positively charged electrophiles those are h plus cl plus no2 plus etc now why we turn this cl plus atomic cl has seven valence electrons and if it loses one electron then it will have 1 2 3 4 5 6 it have six valence electrons and it have seven valence electrons so you can see that after losing one electron cl has one electron shorter than the atomic cl so it turned as cl plus so i hope you understand the difference between cl plus cl minus and cl dot there are some neutral electrophiles are there such as lcl3 lcl3 has trigonal planar geometry and if we draw the electrons of both al and cl these are the electrons of al three valence electrons are there of al and these are the electrons of cl and these are the lone pairs of cl so if we count the total valence electron around alumina it will be 1 2 3 4 and 5 6 so we can get that six valence electrons of al that means it does not fulfill the octet that's why it acts as electrophile second example is bf3 bf3 also have the trigonal planar geometry and it also have 1 2 3 4 5 6 valence electrons of boron that means it also does not fulfill the octet similarly this species is also an electrophile 
because if we draw in correct manner and we count the valence electron of carbon this is 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 so we get 6 valence electrons of carbon that means it also does not fulfill the octet basically this is known as carbon this is an important intermediate in organic reactions we will discuss it later now we will discuss some characteristics of electrophiles electrophiles accept electron pair that is they oxidize other species and itself gets reduced in other words electrophiles are oxidizing agent suppose there is an electrophile termed as e plus and if it accepts an electron from a species then it actually oxidizes the species and itself gets reduced to e so it acts as an oxidizing agent because it oxidizes other species and itself gets reduced but then there comes an interesting electrophile which is a reducing agent and that electrophile is nothing but BH3 this is a very very important and this electrophile acts as reducing agent why BH3 acts as reducing agent so BH3 has trigonal planar geometry and also contains 6 valence electron of boron so it is 2 electron shorter from octet that's why it exists as dimer it exists as B2H6 let's understand the bonding of B2H6 so boron has valential electronic configuration that is 2s to 2p1 that is ground state and in excited state one 2s electron jumps to 2p this is 2s and this is 2p then sp3 hybridization occurs and we get four sp3 hybrid orbitals there are three electrons so these three electrons and this combines with hydrogen to form a sigma bond this also combines with hydrogen to form a sigma bond this also combines with hydrogen to form a sigma bond and this sp3 is vacant and that's why it exists as dimer if we draw the orbital diagram of b 2 6 if we draw the orbital picture of b 2 6 then this is the 4 sp3 hybrid orbitals of 1 boron and this is another boron Here is one hydrogen, here also one hydrogen, and 
Here also one hydrogen. Here also one hydrogen. One here also one hydrogen. And here also one hydrogen. If we feel the electrons. So actually, this vacant sp3 hybrid orbital interacts such a way. And similarly, this sp3 hybrid vacant orbital interacts such a way. And it forms a three-centered two-electron bond. Why three-centered two-electron bond? Because here is bone center, here is one hydrogen center, and here also another bone center. This is one sp3 hybrid orbital of one bone. This is one s atomic orbital of one hydrogen, and this is the another sp3 hybrid orbital of another bone. So three centered, and the electron is two. So it is three c two e bond. This is also three c two e bond. Now that's how BH3 overcomes its octet deficiency. and how it act as reducing agent so this hydrogen leaves as hydride when the reaction takes place and it attacks other electrophilic center that's how bh3 acts as reducing agent it is an electrophile reaction takes place this hydrogen leaves as hydride taking up these two electrons and leaves as hydride and it attacks other electrophilic center such a way that if we take an aldehyde and we react with bh3 then this hydride from b2h6 reacts such a way and we get the product thus we can say that bh3 is an electrophilic reducing agent this is very very important now another characteristics of electrophile is that as electrophiles accept electron pairs they are called lewis acids according to lewis acids are electron pair acceptors so electrophiles accept electron to form e and this acts as lewis acid according according to lewis acids are electron pair acceptor now we move on to nucleophiles nucleophiles are electron rich species and they donate electron pair to electrophiles so these are electron rich species and they donate electron pair to electrophiles for example cl minus can act as a nucleophile because it has eight valence electrons so one electron greater than atomic cl so it can act as nucleophile because it's it is electron rich species similarly oh minus can act as nucleophile because atomic oxygen contains six valence electron but oh contains 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 7 valence electrons 
So that's why a negative charge is there because it is seven valence electrons, one electron greater than atomic oak. That's why it is electron rich and it can donate electron pair to electrophiles. And another example of, of a nucleophile is suppose this compound. And if we treat this with NaNH2 in liquid ammonia, basically it is a base and it is source of NH2 minus. And this NH2 minus abstracts proton, this acidic proton, and heterolytic cleavage takes place, and these two electrons is taken away by this carbon. So we can get CH3C divided one C minus. So we know that atomic carbon has four valence electron, but in this species, we can see that one, two, three, and these two. So total five valence electrons. One electron greater than atomic carbon. That's why a negative charge is there. And that's why it is electron rich and it can donate electron pair to the other electrophiles. So it is also a nucleophile. Now, bases are also electron rich and donate electrons. So, what is the difference between base and nucleophile? Bases predominantly depicts hard character and nucleophiles predominantly depicts soft character. Now, what does this hard and soft means? Hard means hard to oxidize and soft means easy to oxidize. Hard to oxidize and soft means easy to oxidize. In other words, nucleophile readily donates electron pair, but bases does not. Bases only donates electron pair to acidic protons, that is, they abstract acidic protons. Thus, bases abstracts acidic. Now, we will discuss some characteristics of nucleophiles. Nucleophiles donate electron pair. That means they reduces other species and itself gets oxidized. So, nucleophile donate this electron pair to electrophile. So, so it acts as a reducing agent. As nucleophile donates this electron pair to the electrophile, it actually reduces the electrophile and itself gets oxidized. So, it actually acts as a reducing agent, but there are nucleophiles which acts as an oxidizing agent. For example, H2O2 in basic medium, this is an example of nucleophile which acts as an oxidizing agent. So basically, H2O2 has this structure and this OH minus abstract this acidic proton and we get this species. And this species is acts as nucleophile. If this compound is taken and if we treat H2O2 in basic medium 
then it generates this nucleophile and this nucleophile basically attacks here and we get the product basically this epoxide so this is an example of oxidation reaction and it acts as oxidizing agent although it is an nucleophile next there comes a very important characteristics of bases and nucleophiles sometimes nucleophilicity and basicity can be decided according to their size or bulkiness and sometimes cannot be we will understand by some examples suppose we consider this reagent that is kh mds this is basically this compound here also me3si here is k here is in and here is also k is in or simply we can termed as me3si equal to n minus k plus so this is an bulky reagent due to bulky in size it never acts as nucleophile it acts always as base and it abstract acidic proton so due to bulky in size it never acts as nucleophile it always acts as base and abstracts acidic protons but then there comes a bulky reagent called k selectride or l selectride this is basically boron and here and here is k plus when k plus is there it is called k selectride and if li plus is there it called l selectride and it is also bulk in size but it acts as nucleophile does not acts as base we can take an example regarding this reagent that is and we treat this this substrate with k selectride and this is k selectride and this acts as a nucleophile where this hydride attacks here this goes there and this goes there and we can get this this enolate here k plus is there and you get this type of you know that so although it is bulky but it does not act as base it acts as nucleophile so that's why sometimes nucleophilicity and basicity can be decided according to their size or bulkiness and sometimes cannot so you cannot say with surety that if a reagent is bulky then it absolutely acts as a base it can act as an nucleophile 
so by this i am stopping here if you have any doubt please let me know in the comment section please like share and subscribe my channel thank you